Hi guys, welcome back to HAG Studios. If you have ever done any renovation, whether of an entire house or a room in a house, you will probably agree with me that to say the least, it can be difficult. In this video, we're gonna look at how proper planning can make it a lot easier. I'll also show you a video of a recent renovation we did. And we look at some of the details there. It's a two bedroom, two bathroom apartment, and it was totally gutted and made new. We look at some of those details and we hope you'll find it useful. So let's get started. Renovating your house, especially when you have little or no experience, can be a very frustrating experience. There are so many things that can go wrong, but with proper planning, the end result can be very rewarding. have the best end result however you must have a clear plan not just in your head but you must write it down make a list of must-haves things you definitely have to change for example Will you need new kitchen cupboards? Will a bathroom need to be completely gutted? Will tiles need to be removed and new ones installed? Hand in hand with a list of needs will be a budget, a realistic one now. Remember, you can't want the whole world when your budget only allows for a tiny, tiny island. Get an idea of the real cost of things by shopping around and then maybe add about a 15% to that. As I guarantee you, it's gonna cost more. It's best to do a room at a time rather than stretch your budget to include too many things, resulting in a poor finish or worse, no finish at all. Be honest with yourself about what you can really do. Do not attempt DIY projects when you really don't have the necessary skills or the time. Even with YouTube videos, there are certain tools you will need and everything appears easier on these videos. Get recommendations for a contractor or for skilled workmen. You will save yourself a lot of stress even though they sometimes come with stress. You also save on money when you avoid too many mistakes. Make a floor plan for each room by measuring and plotting on graph paper. If you're so inclined, you can use one of the programs that are available on the internet for this. Have a clear idea of the style you wish to use. Look at design magazines, YouTube videos, and Pinterest to help with this. You may also look back at some of our design details videos 
for ideas and inspiration. Create a clear progress order. This is so important. Literally write a schedule of the order in which things are to be done. For example, demolish floor tiles and wall tiles. Two, remove debris to the outside. You may want to do a total removal of debris at the end because it's much more cost effective. Three, remember to lock off water. Four, install mixer for shower. Five, install other plumbing and electricals in walls. As promised, here's a look at the renovation which I just completed. Renovating, you have to expect the unexpected. The original floors in this apartment were parquetas, which were in pretty good condition, even though they were about 30 to 40 years old. But our client wanted a more contemporary look, so we decided on large porcelain tiles with a bit of sheen. Removing the wood parquet took a while, but what was worse was that when removed, they left a sticky black glue all over the floor. We tried so many things, including hot water and vinegar, and had no success. But we knew leaving the film of glue might compromise the tiles which would be laid. After about a week, we finally found a machine which we rented from Total Tools. They also recommended someone to use the machine. And voila, it was all gone in a half a day. When renovating a small bath, you can splurge a bit on tiles. In this case, we chose these encaustic tiles for a bit of drama. When using tiles with large patterns, however, it's best to use a size tile that will work in the space without your having to cut. A half of a pattern tile just doesn't look so good. Note also that we use the floating vanity in order not to hide any of the tile. When including a niche for shampoos, soaps, etc., this should be done as soon as the old tiles are removed. You'll need a jackhammer for this. In the master bathroom, I made the niche the full size of a tile. In the smaller bath, I thought a niche like a piece of art, a shadow box, would be interesting. So I made it the size of four tiles combined. Mm. 
Back to the master bathroom. The section of the wall-to-wall -wall vanity, which is close to the toilet, was left as open shelving or storage. Doors would be difficult to open there. Here's a little cost-effective trick I use in the master bath. Rather than tile the wall behind the mirror, which would be mostly covered up, I decided on an accent paint color which I picked up from the tile. This saved some money, but also added a surprising color to the room. This is a time to assess electrical outlets and make sure you have enough and they are placed in the appropriate locations. You should have no need for extension cords when you are done. If you plan to place a TV on the wall, a plug should be where it's behind the TV. No cords or wires should be hanging below. The kitchen is relatively small, so we decided on light colored cupboards and also a light countertop, quartz countertop, with a bit of sparkle. For the microwave, it's best to place the plug inside a nearby cupboard for easy access. For this, you'll need a small opening in the side of the cupboard. For a continuous look, we place a shallow cupboard around the panel box. Still easy access, which is very important. There's a small breakfast counter, maybe for just two stools. The dining table will be nearby, so it was important to calculate so that they would not be too close to each other. Note the overhead light is placed so it will be centered over the dining table. I just love that light fixture.
the room was a bit dark, so we added a drop ceiling. We were only able to do about four inches, and then we placed recessed lights. I hope you found that useful and your renovation projects will be a lot easier. Thanks for watching and see you next time.